morning. Thank you so much for joining us here at Life in Christ Church. We are so glad to have you. We believe that it's not about where you've been in life, but only where you're going. If you ever want more information about us, you can simply go to Life in Christ Church CC, or we would love to have you like and follow us on Facebook. Now let's prepare our hearts to receive today's message. How you doing this morning? I'll ask you again in about 30 minutes. <laughs> um, praise the Lord, that sounds great. I don't know what that is, but I like it. Um, before I get started with the message, I, I know Wednesday night we talked about this coming Wednesday night and what we're going to be doing. And uh, do you have that? Is that up here, the bag of that stuff? We're going to, uh, this coming Wednesday night, I'm going to teach a message on communion. And then we're all going to receive communion together. And then uh, you'll be given for each one of you, you know, in your family. Now, when I say in your family, here's what I mean. You're attending here, your family, you're, you're born again, you're a Christian. Not, I'm taking one to my drunk uncle who hates God. Forget it. That's not, that's not even what communion is about. Okay? Now, so we'll do a message on communion. We'll all take communion together. And then when you leave, you can pick up a bag of communion elements. So for the entire month of July... Now, you can do this after July. You can do it every day, whatever. But the entire month of July, as a church, as a family, we'll be taking communion every day together. Now, you may take it in the morning. Some of you may take it at night, whatever. I'm just saying. But as you do it, remember why you're doing it. Jesus said, as often as you do this, sometimes people think, well, you can only, you can only take communion at church and it has to be some kind of like real spiritual religious service and you know, you got to go through all this stuff and jump through these hoops and somebody needs to be wearing a robe and we need to, you know, it's got to be all that. No, it's not what it means. He said as often, as often. What is often? It's a lot, right? I mean, it's more than one time a year. It's kind of, you know. And so as often as you do this, remember me. Well, how many of you know there's more to remembering Jesus than just remembering him dying on the cross? There's, there's remembering him at the whipping post and what he did there. and then So I believe what's going to happen through this month of July, not only is the church going to grow stronger, not only are we going to grow stronger as a family, I believe a lot of you are going to experience healing in your body simply because you're remembering what Jesus did at the whipping post. Then I also believe a lot of you are going to understand redemption more because you're going to be remembering what Jesus did at the cross. And I also believe that a lot of you are going to experience freedom more because you're going to realize that Jesus isn't still on the cross, that he's alive and well. Amen. So I believe it's going to be a month of miracles. I believe we're going to get testimonies about it. But I tell you what I also believe it's going to do. You say, man, Pastor, you're believing for a lot and you don't even know. You have no clue. I tell you, I believe that going into this last six months of the year, we're going to see one of the strongest times that we've ever experienced as Christians. I'm not saying as a church. I mean, yeah, as a church, sure. But I'm saying as Christians. Because I can tell you what's happening in the body of Christ. People are starting to get guts again. And it's a good thing. Amen. All right. So I would be here Wednesday if I were you. Well, you know, preacher, I like to lay out on Wednesdays. Well, that's your mistake. You laying out on Wednesdays is a mistake. I don't know if, since, you know, if you're the one that likes to lay out on Wednesdays, you missed the last two Wednesdays. You missed two nights of straight up outpouring.
I mean, I've, I don't know how many people I've anointed in the last two weeks. Two, three hundred maybe. Three hundred. And spilt no telling how much oil on this platform. And I ain't talking about a five-gallon bucket of oil. I'm talking about a little old jar. And it's still just as full as it was when we brought it. So, yeah. Man, I don't know if I believe that. Well, I'm glad you said that because I got a message tailored just for you. <laughs> Religion's response. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Man, that is a mean looking dude. And that's really about how religion looks. Mean. Now, I know sometimes when I'm preaching up here, I probably look mean because I scowl and I got big old wrinkles right here in my forehead where I, you know, but I'm really not mean. I'm just mean with the devil. I can't stand him. Man, I mean, he is an outright jerk. And he tries to butcher people. And I just don't like it. And so I go with the devil with everything in me. Because I want people to understand the power of God. And that you can operate in the power of God. So religion has a response. Every time that God's people start to move in the things of God or someone gets born again. You know, you, you can drink yourself blackout drunk. You can lay in a street alley somewhere, high on heroin, and your family wouldn't even come looking for you. As a whole, your family would not come looking for you. Well, they're just out doing wrong. I just pray they... I just, huh. But then, you, you know, you come to a church, maybe like this one, get born again, get filled with the Holy Spirit, and now all of a sudden they're concerned. You know, you probably don't need to be going to that church. You didn't care that I was on skid row with a needle in my arm. Why do you care now? It's religion's response is what that is. And I'm going to tell you, you better be cautious who you listen to. Because everybody doesn't have your best interest. They may love you as a family member, but I'm telling you religion can creep up on them. And the enemy will use anybody to try to derail you. Mark 9. I want to I show you a, a, a faith response, and then we're going to look at a religious response. You still Okay. I really believe when God told me that I was going to be a preacher, and I've surveyed the last 20 years of it, and I thought about when I started preaching up till the time now, I really believe God called me to, to call out that spirit of religion in people and to crush its head. I really believe that. Because it's like that's the, one, that's the one thing that I continually, you know, you hear people say, you know, Billy Graham had the same message for 50 years. And pretty much he did. You could pretty much track with him. You could pretty much pick up in any crusade. You could have heard him one year and then 10 years later you could have heard him again and he's tracking the same way. And I can tell you, <laughs> it's working out that way for me. I hate religion. I said I hate it. I hate it because it's the devil's seed. He's used religion to stifle people for thousands of years. Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. And wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. 
he answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? Now he's talking to everybody there. He wasn't just talking to that guy. O faithless, how many of you know you can have little faith? You can have great faith or you can be faithless. And that's what's happened with much of the church today is that people show up, they listen, they get up, and they leave. And they leave faithless. It's the truth. How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought, they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately when who saw him? That spirit. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. So apparently this boy was not just a pup. Right? It's happening from childhood. Apparently, he's getting some age on him now. What is it in in the Jewish culture? 13, they go from being a child to an adult. So apparently, we've crossed over that barrier now. I'm I'm just saying it seems apparent to me looking at this. And And often, he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to do what? The devil's got one plan for your life, ending it. But if you can do anything, he's like, look, Jesus, if there's anything you've got up your sleeve, anything you can do, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, man, this is so key. This is so key to all of the Bible. If you can believe Let me ask you now, how many things are possible to the one that believes? All things according to Scripture, right? Not just, you know. (laughs) Believing your neighbor's going to die because you don't like them. I mean, even though that's not scriptural. There are some things you can believe for your neighbor, but. If, if you can believe. So Jesus is basically saying, you may or may not. But if you can, all things are possible to him who believes. Okay? Immediately the father and the child cried out and said with tears, I love this passage of scripture. Lord, I believe, like, I do believe, but help my unbelief. What? I've been seeing this now since he was a little child. I believe you've got the ability, but my head is way in the way. (laughs) Right, you understand? How many of you have been there? We've all been there. If you'll be honest with yourself, you've been there. Like, I believe Jesus can do anything, but my head is doing everything it can to talk me out of it because of what I'm seeing. That's why I constantly say, stop seeing with these eyeballs and start seeing with these because then it changes your perspective. You start going from what's the, what, the, uh, what the current situation is to the power of God operating in your life. So then you go from, I believe, help my unbelief, to I believe, I believe, <laughs> Right? It's like I've taken my head out of the equation now because what I see in the natural does not decide what God has done with his power. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit. Hey, let me ask you this real quick. Do you think those spirits all died? Well, you find yourself in a rare crowd Because a lot of Christians think demon spirits don't exist. In fact, over half of Christianity doesn't even believe the devil is real. Uh, 
That's why they don't think their kids are demon possessed. That's why they don't think their drunk husband that beats the snot out of them all times demon possessed. Because they think demons don't exist anymore. They also don't think the power of God exists anymore. I don't even know why they call themselves a Christian. Sir, are you judging? I don't know. Call it whatever you want. I'm saying I don't know how you can call yourself a Christian when you don't even believe what's going on in the Bible. What are you believing in? How could you believe that Jesus Christ came from heaven, lived a sinless life, died on a cross for somebody he didn't even, hadn't even met physically? How could you believe that he died? How could you believe his blood was shed so you could be forgiven of your sin? How could you believe he's risen from the dead? How could you believe all of that and then miss everything else? I do not, like I can't understand that. It's impossible for me to understand that because it makes zero sense. Do you understand? You hear for the first time, I promise I'm not mean. I just get really loud when I talk about Jesus. I don't know why. I get really excited. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out convulsed him greatly and came out of him and he became as one dead so that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. Now do you see there the response of a man who understood the power of Jesus yet his mind, his, his soul realm his mind, his emotions were tied to the fact that his son was just being tortured. So it was hard. I'm telling you, sometimes believing and stepping out in faith for a miracle is hard because everything in you physically says don't do it. Some people won't ever come up here and get prayed for because they listen to their body too much. They listen to their mind too much. Oh, you can't walk up there? I mean, what are people going to think? Who cares? This guy put his reputation on the line and didn't care. I'm going to tell you something. When you get yourself into a place where people's opinions don't run your life, It'll be the most liberating day you've ever experienced. I'm telling you, it's the greatest thing ever. I want to be free to serve God way more than I want to be bound by what everybody thinks. Some of you won't even tell people where you go to church. It's true. You won't because you know what people have said about it. Well, I know what people said about Jesus, but I'm not ashamed to tell them I serve him. Amen. Pastor, you know what they said about the church? No, don't care. Don't care. It doesn't matter. Here's what matters to me. If they're talking, that means I'm upsetting the devil and so are you. Well, they're not full of the devil. They might not be full of the devil, but I'm telling you, he'll use anybody. His mouth. <laughs> John 5. Here's, the, here's religion's response. Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. Inside the city near the sheep gate was the pool of Bethesda with five covered porches. Crowds of sick people, blind, lame, or paralyzed, lay on the porches waiting for a certain movement of the water. 
For an angel of the Lord came from time to time and stirred up the water, and the first person to step in the water was when the water was after the water was stirred, was healed of whatever disease he had. One of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years. That's older than some of you. That's a long time. 38 years is a long time to be sick with anything. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him. Now this is a viable question. Because I'm convinced some people don't. I am. Would you like to get well? I mean, if, if, it wasn't, if it wasn't the fact that some people don't want to, why would he ask? Would you like to get well? Would you like to get well? <laughs> Duh. But he said, I can't, sir. I can't get well. For I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Jesus told him, it's like, I, I mean, I love how he just don't play around. I can't, sir. I have no one to put me in. Jesus said, stand up, pick up your mat and walk. <laughs> he just got up. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. Now, before you take this down, he rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. He was crippled. 38 years of it. That's a spell. You know, if you, if, if you just lay up for a year and do nothing, Somebody's going to have to teach you how to walk again. I'm talking 38 years. I bet his legs look like bird legs. Now think about it. I'm telling you, you lose all your muscle, my, everything. Boom. I mean like, you know, if you was one of them guys at the pool, you like, hey, wait, wait, hey. Don't leave me out of this. Instantly the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat, began walking, but this miracle happened on the Sabbath. Now here comes the religion. So the Jewish leaders objected. They said to the man who was cured, you can't work on the Sabbath. The law doesn't allow you to carry that sleeping mat. Now, I know he didn't say it, but I probably would have. Well, if one of you stupid jerks would have put me in here in the last 30 years, we wouldn't be in this shape. I don't even know who the guy was, but some guy came by and said, take your mat up and go home, and so I did what he said. I obeyed the man, rolled up my mat, and started walking. Religious people always want to tell people why you can't believe God or why prayer may not work or why God won't do it for you. Always. It's always the case. How many of you be honest since you've really went after God, like I mean all in, not just kind of like living for God, like, well, yeah, you know, I kind of go to church every once in a while, but then the other six days, I mean, no, I mean you're living for God. You've experienced pushback from religious people. You know, you go to church a lot. Familiar? 
What kind of music? Right? You mean they don't wear suits? Huh? Have you heard that one? Have you heard it? I'm just saying, I'm not even allowed to preach because I wear blue jeans. I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there so you understand what goes on. Oh man, I just had a country song go through my head. <laughs> not good. <laughs> so you think preachers just float in? I, my brain was still living. You know, my spirit got renewed, but help my mind, Jesus. You need to understand the devil has a play. So anything he can do to derail you from doing what God created you to do, he'll throw it in front of you. He'll just throw it out there and see if you'll take the bait. That's all he's looking for. He just wants you to take the bait of it and then he'll do the rest of the work. You know, Pastor Wayne here, he can't even, he can't, he's got tattoos, my God. <laughs> Preacher, are you saying what? Am I right or wrong? Some of you been told because you've had a divorce you could never serve God. Right or wrong? It's not true, but you've heard it. From well meaning people who somehow have overlooked all of their life. Hmm. I think Jesus might have said something about that. You look it up. Religion's response is never good. And it's, it's demeaning and it's continually trying to knock you off track from following God. Amen. It's the truth. I don't know. I mean, I don't mind wearing a suit. I like suits. But you know, I noticed that nobody I talk to likes them. So I thought, you know, I don't understand why I would be the only guy in the room since I'm not here to bury you or try to get you out of a felony. I'm just going to wear blue jeans. We'll call it good. Praise the Lord. I'll wear a suit next week for all the religious people to feel good about themselves. <laughs> I told them in the back, I said, you know, this will probably be a short message. I wasn't kidding. Now I want to cover three or four areas real quick. The area of healing always brings a religious response. Always. You know, it's God's will to heal people. Eh, I don't know if it's God's will for everybody to be healed. Oh, okay. Did you read scripture? Well, yeah, but we couldn't know God's will. I'm like, and listen, what I'm saying to you is not hyperbole. I've had these conversations. Preacher, I just don't believe it's God's will to heal everybody. Well, I'm sorry you're mistaken. And believe in wrong, but it actually is God's will. Or, or Jesus was in straight up rebellion. Not only when he went to the whipping post, but when he healed them all. Everywhere he went, 
I don't know how you can build a doctrine off of all of that that says it's not God's will to heal everybody. No, not true. It's already been paid for just like your salvation. How did you get born again? By faith? Some of y'all are wondering. I don't really know, preacher. I just, it's a miracle to me too. I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't hardly believe it myself. I, I get it. That's kind of how I felt. I'm like, I don't even know. How would you do this? But you did. You paid for it. So I receive it. Well, but healing's different. No, it's not. It's not different. You can just see it. You can see the sickness. You can feel the sickness. You can gauge the sickness. But Jesus took our sickness. Is that what the Bible says, yes or no? Yes. Then what will you believe? You, you, gotta, you can't pick and choose. It can't be good for everybody else, but not for you when it happens to you. No, it's good for everybody. Simple. Simple. I'm telling you, people just jerk around with the Word of God just to get what they want out of it, to get it to say something that appeases them. And it's very prevalent in America. It's the compromised gospel. And if you think it doesn't exist, you start really listening to some of these people you think float three feet off the ground and you'll find out that they're teaching critical race theory, they're woke, and all this garbage that's not gospel. They're not fans of the church and they're not a fan of you. All people are created equal, period. There's nothing, that's not racist. That's the truth out of the word of God. <laughs> what, well, I said I'd give you three or four areas. The area of tithing, same way. It's the same way. Well, I know what the Bible says about tithing, but maybe you're not able to do that and you can just start at 3%. No, you're stealing seven. It's not tithing. It's not tithing. Oh, I knew that preacher always talks about money. Yeah, I do. If you, if you, don't, if you want to listen, over the last 20 years I've been preaching, every message I talked about money, every one of them. I've been in a 20-year series on why you ought to be given. It's the longest series in the history of the church since the Holy Ghost came in the upper room. That's what religious people will tell you about me. It is, I know. I like to put all this on video so all the religious crowd that sneaks in to watch, the Holy Spirit can deal with them. Just saying. And I know who they are when I walk in restaurants and places of business. I know who they are. Because they're like, I used to do that when I drank all the time. Oh, God. <laughs> now they do it because it's like, oh, God's in him. Yee. It's true. I don't care. I just laugh. And then I make them real uncomfortable. <laughs> hey! Oh, don't think I don't. <laughs> yes, I do. Sometimes they even go to their table and sit down. How y'all doing? Are you good? Are your family good? They're like, <laughs> it's true. My wife will tell you. It's like, oh, here he goes. <laughs> I just can't resist it because I can't stand religion. I want people to be free. Amen. So in the area of tithing, you say, well, I don't know if I'm on tithe. That's fine. You don't, you don't have to. You, you don't have to. Well, what is tithing? 10% off of all of your increase to the local place where you're being fed. That's what it is. Well, I don't believe it. Okay. There's no pressure. 
You don't have to believe in healing. You don't have to believe in hell. But you better be cautious if you don't believe in hell because you may be headed there. Because I don't know how you can believe you're going to heaven if you don't believe there's an alternative. The Bible is the word of God. Period. Some people don't, you know, they say the gifts of the Spirit don't exist. Well, if I was you, I wouldn't go out there because they talk about the gifts of the Spirit. That's why I'm going, because you won't. I love saying stuff like that and then just wait to see who takes a breath first. This is the kind of preaching that makes people nervous. And it shouldn't. This is stuff you shouldn't even have to talk about. You shouldn't have to talk about it. Well, I just don't believe the Holy Spirit's for everybody. Really. It's funny. That's so funny. How in the book of Acts, he came on all of them. And then everywhere they went, everybody got filled. It's so funny to me how people can decide what is and what isn't. When it's really plain in Scripture. Well, I just don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay. That's fine. You don't have to. You won't be bothered by it either. You won't. I prayed for a guy the other night. I, I didn't even pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit for him. But when you're in a room where the power of God's at, Things happen. He's up here to get prayed for, and you know what his heart was? I just want God. I mean, he, the guy just wants whatever he can get from God. I lay hands on him. He goes out in the power of God. Then he comes to me later. He's like, man, I don't know what just happened. I said, what are you talking about? He said, you prayed for me? Dude, my legs just went out from under me. And he said, and then this, like, language started coming out of me. I was like, Dude, that's awesome. And he just looked at me. I said, he got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now you have a prayer language. Praise the Lord. I mean, I didn't make it like a big, huge production out of it out in the foyer. That's what God wants for you. So I'm happy. Now do something with it. Some people say, well, I just don't believe in that. I just don't believe in that. Well, okay. That's fine. Some people don't believe in gravity. Some people don't believe the earth is round. Some people don't believe we ever got to the moon. Pretty sure we've been to the moon. Pretty sure the earth is round. Pretty sure if you jump off this roof, you're going to pop on the ground. I'm pretty sure of it. I've seen people fall from high places and bounce like a Super Bowl. They understood gravity in a way they never thought they could. And since I made the decision, God, I want everything you have, I want it. I've understood God in a way I never thought I could. And many of you have done the same thing. You say, well, I just don't know. Preacher, I just can't believe that it's God's will to heal everybody. Okay, that's up to you. You don't have to believe it. Still true. Still true. I don't believe the baptism of the Spirit is for today. Okay. You don't have to, but it is. You don't have to believe that the gifts are for today but they are. You don't have to believe anything that's in the Bible. Can I see one of your Bibles? Sometimes I think people think I'm just playing video games. You don't have to believe anything in here. And God will not fall off the throne. 
You don't have to believe a word of this. You don't have to believe that God created man and woman. You don't have to believe that all people are created equal. You don't have to believe that Jesus came to redeem all mankind. You don't have to believe any of that. In fact, you don't even have to believe in God. You don't have to. God won't make you. And that's the beauty of our God. Religion responds in a totally different attitude than faith. Faith says, God, I don't understand everything in this, but I know it's your word and I believe it. Help my unbelief. Help, help my understanding, God. Like, I believe what you say. Religion says, well, that was good for then, but it's passed away and it's not for today. Why don't you go on out to the pasture and graze for what days you have left and stop misleading people? The reason we teach and preach like we do is so that when we're long gone from here and I'm in my home in heaven, there'll be a remnant left in this earth that'll teach the Word of God. Look, I don't have degrees. I don't have all that. I don't, all I know is Jesus. I'm baptizing the Holy Spirit full of the fire of God. I don't know everything about the Bible. There's plenty of people in this room way smarter than me and way smarter than me in the Bible. But I'll tell you what I do have. I have faith in God. And I have faith that God said it in His book and it's good for me today. I'm not waiting on tomorrow. I'm going to get it now. And I'm not going to buy into religion's response. Then I gotta go sit somewhere that's like a mortuary. And I gotta sit there like I'm dead and never respond to a holy God. I refuse to live life that way. And I said years ago, God, if this is all there is to you, I'm out. I'll never serve you again. And I meant it. Because if you're like all these men say you are, there's nothing to you. And I went on a quest. And Jesus walked off of those pages right into my life. So I make no apologies for the fire that burns in my heart for His Word and for people to get their act together. I make no apologies. Not a one. I'm not a bit sorry. And I hope my faith rubs your religion wrong. I hope when I walk in the room your religion can't stand. We ought to all go on our own quest to find the true and living God in Scripture. Serve Him and Him alone. For there is only one God. One true and living God. His name is Jehovah. His Son is Jesus. He baptizes people in His Holy Spirit. And we now carry that authority in the earth. Amen. Come on, give God a shout. Hallelujah, Lord. <laughs> His name is Jesus. Wow. That should have given you some boldness. That whole message right there. Knowing that religion is what's trying to keep you down. But we have the name of Jesus, and that's above all religion, amen? And we can use that name, we can use that authority to stand against the religious, that religious demon. What a powerful message. I thank God for it. Listen, this is our time of service where we get to worship God in our tithe and our offering. 
We have different ways that you can give here at Life in Christ. Just like what Pastor Chris was talking about a minute ago. It's your way of coming into covenant with God and His Word so that His Word can manifest itself in your life. That's what it's all about. And we have different ways you can give. You can give online. You can give right here in person. There's envelopes, yellow envelopes in the seat backs in front of you. And you can drop that in the tithe and offering buckets as you walk out any exit. You can text to give or you can go on the Secure Give app and you can do it that way. Amen. Father, I thank you for every tither, every giver. I thank you, Father God, that everything that you said you would do will come alive in their life. Every promise, every bit of the covenant, we cling to in the name of Jesus. I thank you for it, Father. We believe you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Listen, if you join us online, God bless you. We love you. We pray that you have an incredible day. And um, I believe that God's favor is upon your life. In Jesus' name, amen. As a church, it is an honor to play a small part in what God is doing in and through your lives. And we would love to continue on that journey with you. If you have accepted Christ for the first time today, or you reconnected with Him, we would love to help you. You can go to our website and see how to connect with us, or you can text the word DECISION to the number on the screen, so we can rejoice with you and help you in these next steps. Please remember, that it's not about where you've been in life, only where you're going. And have a blessed day.